Alrighty, so um, in your notes, go ahead and open up your um, class classwork document, Google document, and let's talk about what we're going to do this week. And um, for this semester, this item is actually, this item meaning creating a movie, is being done later, a, little, a few weeks in the semester than I normally do it. Normally, and you know, take a few notes along the way here, normally I put the movie between when we end the HTML and CSS and before we start the JavaScript, okay? By the way, note to everyone who put this, there's a difference between Java, J-A-V-A, and JavaScript. I know it seems like they'd be similar, and they're actually in some ways as they're evolving, becoming closer, but there actually is a difference between those two, right? Anyway, side topic there. So for this item, which is creating a movie, um, and you probably have heard me say by now, in this semester that I'm recording this in, which is the fall 2017, I've normally used YouTube Editor, and that is a built-in web-based editor from YouTube. And I love it because it gives at least a, the entry-level movie-making experience to students, and it gives um, a platform of accessibility that I really like. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So in your notes, my approach. So when I have you do something in classwork that is not necessarily taking notes, which I will say for this classwork you are going to be taking notes and then for the hands-on this week you're actually going to be creating your movie. Okay, so that's the process that we'll be doing here. So for when I do something that's beyond note-taking, I try to find something that is, is, is the same across all platforms as much as I can do that. So across Android phones, and you can see here, because I'm going to end up using, for this assignment, I'm going to show you how to use Google Photo Assistant, okay? So when I look to do these things, I look to say, what is available for me to show students that will work across most of their available devices? And that's why, and I will just show you, right, what and why I can no longer use this. That's why I love the YouTube editor, was that you did you could just go right to it right but it is no longer available so I had to really spend some time and it was really kind of surprising to me how few things were available as a matter of fact I read I looked at this article about some of the, be the best uh, free online <coughs> video editing software and I have to say I disagree with their first choice their movie making online I found that to be crazy. Um, but number two was a uh, YouTube editor <laughs> and it was my favorite. So um, I loved it. Uh, but And I looked at some of their other choices and they just didn't give what I wanted. And at some point they turned from free to paid, which is also not what I wanted. Let me close this. So coming back here. So after much consideration and actually looking at several things. I uh, talked to some students in the classroom and I decided that I wanted to possibly use something that was uh, on the mobile space because when I say mobile space that means on your phones because we see more and more apps um, taking you know what has traditionally been you know the full desktop applications um, and making them uh, apps on your phone. Uh, but of course, when we do that, we have to minimize features, right? Um, so there's always a balance of giving somebody, because when if you're seriously photo editing, right, you're going to use something, um, Premiere, um, there's an Adobe product. Um, I mean, there's several high-end products here, and that's not where we want to go. Although those skill sets are good to have, okay? So my whole point here was just to explain when I go to do these type of assignments, I really have to consider a lot of different things to try to make this work. So what I landed on was we're going to use the, fo the Google Photo Assistant, which is really in line with what you've already been, at least in notes, exposed to, which is the idea of artificial intelligence. And I'm going to show you in this lecture some of those artificial intelligence features which are getting smarter each day okay so the thing about this and and if you're gonna do if you're gonna follow along with me just and please do a little in your notes warning here 
this if you are not using Google Photos right now um, you're gonna want to install this on your device and I did this with a student in the classroom just so I would see what it was and she was using an iPhone and when we installed it on her device make sure you read through each option because what it started doing um, was actually backing up her local photos onto Google Photos and if you want to do that cool just know that it will try to do that and I believe one of the options when we were walking through her install uh, allow, didn't gave her the option not to but having said that again we're in a we're in we're in our notes now right having said that wherever whatever device you use to take photos you got to make sure you back them up and that's one of the great things about the Google Photos and I'll just switch here to the tab for me so it's uh, once you log into your account it's photos.google.com so if you're like me, um, you have a lot of photos out there, right? Uh, and you can go back. Look at this. I can go back way back because I've been using it for a while. So that's nice, right? And and it'll work on iPhones and across. That's that's why I like it. Now, having said that, right? I do provide here at least a jumping off point, or if you already have some experience using iMovie, which is a native app. Uh, built on Mac or a Windows Movie Maker which is uh, an application built for Windows so I've noticed some students when I ask have had Windows Movie Maker I will tell you and by the way do note here is that if you're going to use Windows Movie Maker and you're running Windows 10 it no longer comes pre-installed with Windows so what you're going to have to do is install it uh, manually and so uh, YouTube again is your friend and I went and looked because I wanted to know uh, as I was researching so I did Movie Maker Windows 10 and I found that there is a little movie showing how to actually install Movie Maker in Windows 10 because again it doesn't come native so you can use either of these uh, ultimately though and this is important so please note uh, on your classwork here is that whatever you use you're going to end up going to YouTube to publish okay and so and that means you need to export what's called an MPEG MPEG 4 okay MPEG 4 um, uh, MPEG 4 is a standard video file uh, these days um, probably one of the most common used uh, there's a couple of formats here and the reason I'm having you note this is a just to understand some of this is this is a file type that both of those pieces of software will output and as a matter of fact I think on both of them now you can actually tell it just to go right to YouTube okay which is what uh, this does and that's why I liked it and it's gonna be really pretty simple to use this these are gonna require more so you know it really you get to kinda of pick your how much you wanna do here so if you're gonna use Google Photo Assistant you're gonna have to install it and walk through that I'm gonna show you how to use it um, it's gonna create uh, the movie that we want with the requirements which I will go over in a minute and it will publish to YouTube okay the only jumping off point will be figuring out where you're gonna do this because the movie part and this is important for me to distinguish the movie part of the Photo Assistant is only available on the mobile device now I'm not completely sure why Google did this um, <laughs> but they did so but the photos right the actual uh, interface to to deal and manage your photos is available on the web like I showed right so that's the thing is part of this program part of this work you can do uh, on the web because you want to get your photos ready okay so what do I mean by that so now in your notes let's switch now to creating your movie your movie requirements right so what you need to have is here's seven requirements and really I would say there's five because the last two is well they're true right so maybe I'll start bottom up here right so you know it needs to be fun so do something and these two are related so I want you to tell a story and you know make it fun because anytime you do something that's more fun you're gonna learn more and you're gonna tend to spend more time doing it 
right? Uh, you do need to give credits uh, where you, um, you know the the materials that you use like for me I'm gonna use all my own photos um, and um, I'm gonna use all my own clips we'll talk about that in a second right and then I'm gonna use the Google Photo Assistant for everything else right so you need at least one video clip if you don't have one uh, definitely um, on the mobile device they're fairly easy to get but again you want to think about this idea of telling a story so for me I'm gonna tell you a story of my recent trip uh, just got back yesterday from New York and so that's a nice thing to be able to use because it's got you know a beginning a middle and an end that's what a story needs right um, but if you don't have a recent one you can think of one or you can come up with I've seen students do like they talk about their puppy their animals their kids whatever right so um, the other thing is if you don't have a clip you can use what's called open source clips. You can go do some uh, links here. Matter of fact, what I'll do here is before I publish this, I'll give some reference links to, to look at free open source video clips. That was the other thing about the YouTube editor is it came with that. And you need to include a music and audio track. I have had students actually use their own voice uh, for the audio track, so that was full fun. But um, And music for the Google Assistant will be built in. Okay, you need at least 10 images, and this is interesting because on what we used before, transitions between each one, um, that that was just a part of what you'd learn. But because I'm going to show you the Google Assistant, they actually don't they they do the transitions for you. Okay, so you don't actually have to do them. But I do say or text on at least five images. Okay, so now there's various ways you can do text on images. Um, I will show you, you could, and you know, make sure you note this, you could go back to that uh, Pixlr that we've used in the past and then open up, uh, open up an image from your computer, right? Uh, and like, here's one, here's just a print screen, but I could just add text to that, okay? Uh, there is some text, of course, on here, but um, so there is ways to do that. So. So just know you can do that. I'm also going to use a mobile app for this, okay? So going back here, uh, I'm going to end up using, and I'll show you in a second, what I'm going to use for this, okay? But, so, and the thing is, the most important thing here is that you want to, and by the way, here's the credit. So you want to have a title of your, of your uh, title with your photo, right? Uh, and the title of your video, right? Your name needs to go on there. And then at the end, you need to have credit. So this is at least two, and I would say at least a couple more in between, images um, that have something on there, right? Kind of maybe in the chapters of your movie, right? So anyway, that's this is the requirement. So ultimately, in your hands-on, once you uh, finish making your movie, you'll publish it to YouTube, right? And then you'll embed, and I'll show you, and there's an, there's an embed link just like we've done on other things, and I'll show you how to do that once I finish, so that you will place into here, into the hands-on for this week. So for the classwork and for the hands-on, we are first on the classwork going over how to create movies and some of the thinking like I talked about before, and then the hands-on, you're actually going to do it and share it with the class, okay? So here, though, the other thing is one to two minutes, one to three. Um, so anywhere in that range, right? But again, you get, need to tell a story. You need to have 10 images, right? Uh, have text on at least five of them. Um, the music, audio clap, clip, a video clip, and then credits, right? So for me, I told you about this and, you know, tell a story. Okay. So having said all of that and talked about the p file output, right? I will tell you, and before I get started, if you end up using one of these others here, um, here's what you will end up doing at the end once you're done. Let me just do this. So you will go to YouTube and you will type upload. Uh, and again, Google Assistant is going to do all this for us, which is again the awesome thing. And then what you will do is select a file to upload, which would be a what kind of file? An MPEG-4 file. Because all popular video um, programs, movie making, video editing programs, output to MPEG-4, which is kind of the standard these days. Okay? 
and then you will do that and then you'll end up publishing it okay and that's an important part is actually hitting the publish button once you upload it um, because then you can actually um, see that other people can see it because if you don't do and put this in your notes if you don't do the last step which is actually doing the um, publish <laughs> it won't actually be available okay so let me see if I can show you here because uh, there's even though there's editors not there I can still look at importing live streaming yeah yeah I could anyway so there is a way to actually look at this but what what you will see and by the way notice how this is that's what I was showing is that when you upload make sure if this is on anything other than public um, you when you publish you won't be able to see this out on the web okay all right well, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch gears just a little bit and I'm gonna pause for just a second while I set up to show you um, actually how to use uh, the photo assistant so hold on okay so before I jump in one last thing and I'm gonna move over to photos.google.com and you're continuing to take notes right now okay because remember your classwork is your note taking on its information so the thing about <laughs> googlephotos.com is that it's got this intelligence built into it and here's what I mean if I go to my assistant here's what Google did before I do any, did anything after my trip so one thing Google did is it looked through my photos and it actually created a movie it thought I'd want. Now it actually wasn't that far apart from what I actually wanted. <laughs> so it was like amazing. The only bummer was, and again I saw this by going to the assistant, is I couldn't edit it. It actually did it and it didn't give me the ability to edit. So that was kind of a bummer. I could share it, I could watch it, I could view it, but I couldn't do that. So the other thing Google did, and this was just like every time I get I have these new experiences, I'm amazed at how much more intelligent it gets. It also created without me doing one thing, this trip trip to New York City, told me the dates I went, and of course if I click in here, what this is awesome is it actually ended up doing is making um, an album showing my travel, Fresno to LA. And then it took some of the photos that I had uh, for, and I ended up changing this. It was actually just text. Here's some of the photos I took, right? So watching Wonder Woman going to a women's conference was totally awesome. Uh, I ended up making um, this, but again, I did very few edits. 99% of this was Google, right? So I would taken a picture of uh, the in-seat uh, animation showing New York, going from LA to New York took some photos but it ended up uh, stylizing those photos for me I'll show you that in a second here's a great photo I took of the skyline and then of get see and then it showed you know here's that and then here is when we got into the hotel so it broke down my album naturally into places like so now that we're in New York here's the pictures of the hotel that next day right so it actually kind of grouped these together and then we went to Google the next day so here are all my photos from when I was at Google right so this is me on stage giving my part of the presentation so then the Highline which was the next day where we ended up going to a different Google location broke that in so this is just a it's phenomenal right to me that you know, and it, it kind of makes sense that it doesn't seem like it would be that hard for to do, but it, it is really a nice thing. So now I'm on my way back. Here's a stylized uh, image. So it took an image that I took from the window of my seat on the plane and it made it really nice. It stylized it in a way that I thought was awesome. Right. And then, of course, the last leg on. So this is like I said 99% of this is Google intelligence it's uh, machine learning is and, and to go through and do this so it makes these albums automatically now here's the downside I'll just be honest with you um, the downside was is that this album I couldn't use to make my movie that seems like a thing they would want to do right but they didn't so uh, what I ended up doing was I grabbed some of the images that I wanted out of here to use and you'll see what I mean in a minute okay so now we're actually gonna move to me actually creating it 
So again, look at this interface. On the web, I can do albums, shared albums, photo books, which I've done, sent my mom one of the summer she was here, a collage or animations, but I can't do movies, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do it on the phone. Okay, so again, you're going to have to install this. So I'm going to use, so it, we're still taking notes here, right? So on my, what I'm going to use to show you, because showing phones on these kind of rec recordings aren't the easiest thing to do. So in your notes, I'm going to show you AirDroid. So, so AirDroid is an app. Uh, I'm going to end up just refreshing this just to get, right? So what happens here is I'm going to get on my app. I'm going to accept this. And then what will happen here, uh, I'm going to do a screenshot, I'm going to have to accept this, and then I'm going to full screen this. So just FYI, this is I did a little research on this before I started doing it. So I loaded an app on my phone called AirDroid, and then without having to create an account, uh, by the way, where I find figured out how to use this, of course, YouTube, right? Um, uh, I just went to a, a IP address in my browser because on my phone I had made this available okay so so what's happening here is I'm actually using my phone and you can see it so now I'm gonna full screen it so you can easily see okay so here's the app um, and again if you're in the App Store on it is on iOS if you're Android uh, you just install it so this is my photos um, Remember, I was showing you a minute ago the interface from the web. So this is the interface from the mobile device. And the reason I'm using this is because I couldn't get the feature, which is the movie. But before I show you that, I want to show you what I also used to create some of my text on my images, right? Because that's the other thing Google doesn't have that I ended up having to use. So let me show you. So I used this. Uh, what's the name on it? Fonto. And this was nice because what I could do here, and, and again, you don't have to do this. You could use Pixlr, you could use something else, is, is I could use either images on my phone already, right? Or I could actually just point it to my photos, which is what's out on the web. Because remember, you have some photos that are on your phone. You have some photos that are backed up, which by the way, you should all be backing up your photos, which is another reason if you're not to use this. <laughs> okay. Uh, but notice um, I have 110 on my device itself. Um, and uh, But look at how many I have out on photos.google.com. Okay, and then it was really easy just to come in here and add some text into there. So, matter of fact, what I ended up doing is I used um, this to add my title, right? So, there's my title one, uh, and then I also I'm gonna, going to uh, discard this image. I also used uh, this to I'm just going to do this real quick to show you. Um, that I also did it to do my credits, right? So here's my credits. We'll see how well that comes out, right? So credits, my photo and clips, and then everything else was Google Assistant goodness. Okay, use whatever you want for that part of it, but that was a nice way to do it. And here's the uh, AirDroid app that I'm using just to show the screen. So now that you've done this prep work, right? So again, you're taking notes along the way. So when you go to do this, now at this point, if you're going to end up using iMovie or something else, you're welcome to go do some notes on one of those other videos if you want. Um, but I think some of you may end up following along here because it'll just be easier and you're about to see why. Okay, so what I have is I have all my photos from the trip, right? Again, not the album. Thanks, Google. Let's make that change in the future. But I come here right there's my photos and then on the bottom here you can see I see my albums I can see sharing but this first one on the assistant is really what I want and notice what's here that wasn't on the web interface and that's the movie okay so when I hit the movie what I get is I get a look at all the photos I have directly available to me broken down by date Right, which is nice. So what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to pick and choose. So he, because I require 10 photos, here's a recommendation I'm going to make to you. So again, you're taking notes. Is to just choose a couple at a time and then modify as you go. 
because if you put them in, you can put them all in, that'd be okay too, but I'm just telling you based on my experience what my suggestion is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this one, because that's my title. I'm going to add um, then my first image going to here. I'm going to add my New York image going to there, right? I'm going to come down and look, So these because these are reversed, right? So when I left some of my images I want to grab that, that were on the plane that I showed you before. I want to add that Wonder Woman photo. I want to add that was a nice stylized uh, one. Here's my New York skyline. I think this was the best one. A little hard to see. So I'm just going to add a first a couple and I'll show you. I'm going to hit create. So if you saw that then what happened there was that it did a create. Okay. So what happened here, I think it was okay, uh, is that so right now I have 11 seconds which of course I'm gonna add photos we'll do that but there's a couple options down here in the bottom Ooh, what happened what happened accidentally let me go back oh I have to do it again it's lovely so you know I guess that's the other point of making sure you be careful when you do this uh, I'm gonna add that one but I'm gonna go back and add my first couple because I'm not gonna do all my photos because that would just take way too long but I do want to add that one and I liked uh, that skyline photo right so I think that was the nice one so six I'm gonna hit create okay so now once I'm in the movie right now it's it's actually taken those images and and notice that it started with the wrong one so all I'd have to do is hit the last icon here at the bottom and it switches to allowing me to look so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this photo and I'm just gonna drag it right and I know it's lagging a little bit on what you're seeing but I'm gonna drag that uh, and see here's the other thing is it we'll see when it comes out is that it was cutting off my text and then I'm gonna add I'm gonna make my map photo second right and then I'm going to add uh, that stylized photo. This is what I did and then getting to New York. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add that one. I'm going to move this one. So all I'm doing here is I'm picking up the photo, right? And I'm picking and as soon as I select it, then it changes to where I can move it. Then I can drag it either way, okay? So that's what I have so far. So now that's just changing the order. And if I hit OK here, then what it does is it takes me back and then you can see what it's doing here I can preview the movie you're not gonna hear it but you can see what it's doing so now it's got a style you might be hearing it picking up on the mic okay so now now that I've changed my order right I could go back in there and I could add some more photos but before I do I'm gonna go in and choose music okay so theme music is really nice so this is music that you can use from Google and you have different moods right so if you want to choose different moods you can do that um, I think I was playing around with this was this the one you can listen to this you can listen to them so you can choose you know which for your mood of your topic you want uh, I think it was yeah that was kind of fun so I'll just for now I'll use that one so so I chose my music and now what I can do is one other thing before I start bringing in more of my photos is I can actually choose the style um, or the theme that I want to use like I could use a vintage I could use an urban fill silver screen which I probably wouldn't because I like color but showtime kind of fun outdoors not too bad I personally like memories you know so then I would hit OK here now I could watch it back. Oh, see now that's nice. So now, now that I've actually selected it and it started doing the movie, now it's showing some of my text. So if I wanted to watch it through, I'm like, okay, this is looking pretty good. Not too bad with the little amount of effort that I've put in. Not too bad. So now I need to go back and add. So now I'm going to go back. Let me just show you real quickly what I did here, which is, and it's hard for you to see the touch points, but it's the last icon. Um, so the three bottom icons, right? So the first icon is where you want to choose your first icon is where you choose your theme your second is your movie and your last one is where you add your different photos so now I'd go in there and start adding more photos so now this might be where I'd add a picture with a 
uh, text on it. But I'm also going to just show you. I'm going to add now also a clip, right? So here's here's me on stage that day, and somebody grabbed a little video of me in there. So that's cool, right? And then I'll maybe add another image of me, a couple of images, because this was, of course, for me, the biggest part of being there was actually being on stage, which was fun. And then I recorded a short video after. I'm not sure that's going to come through, right? So I could maybe look at how that renders through. So I have a couple. So I have four more, so I'm going to add those as well. Oh, this is important. Oh, God, I'm glad you're taking notes right now. So what happened here, and this is such, and this was, I'm so glad I did this but not that I did this. Notice what happened here is that it ended up placing those photos at the point in the timeline that I was located. So what I should have done here, right, is actually gone to the end here and been here when I hit to add the new photos, right? So that would have been the better way, of course, to do that. And of course now, because I haven't done that, I could either start over, because it's not a huge amount of effort at this point, or I just pick these up and move them. That seems harder to me than actually going in there and selecting them again. But, you know, I just, I'm showing you the ideas here of how to use this thing. And now we grab one of these and bring it down. But I think you get the idea, right? So, we're going to do one more, just because... So what's the key takeaway? So the key takeaway is when you're using this, and let me see if I have one more. Oh good, not only, just one more. So luckily that's, okay, so here in your notes is the other reason I'm showing it this way, is that by bringing in a chunk, a chunk, meaning a couple of photos at a time, what you're doing is you're making your life a little easier in case you make these mistakes. So the way I should have done this has been at the end here, and then added the photos like so now I'm going to choose a couple more so these are photos from the next day this is when we were in the other office another movie clip I only require one but two makes sense to me given what I'm trying to do here's some photos from some of the folks I were, was hanging out with on Sunday here's Times Square here's a, a fun a picture of an Anna, uh, a person's in Times Square and then here is the ending. No, I was hanging out with my friend who I worked on this event with. And then, of course, the final photo going. Yeah, so I don't have... The, oh, actually, I need my credit photo. So I'm going to do my credits. There we go. So I'm going to hit done. And so now what it's doing is... Now look what it did. Oh, this is good to see. Is at the end here... Let me make sure you're still recording. You are... So here at the end, notice that it did it in reverse order too. So that's the other thing, is I think what you want to do is select the order and also you want them to bring it in, right? So that's good. So I think for now, right, so that at least gives you that. So what I could do is go ahead and play it through, see what it looks like. And you can see it on the bottom, what it's doing is it's showing you each image. Now you're not getting the stylized um, that I'm getting because it's lagging a little bit. But that looks good, right? So I could, now by the way, notice I think there's a trim here. So I could actually trim that image if I didn't want, or that clip, if I didn't want the whole thing in there, which is nice. I could trim the photo or trim the video, very nice feature to have. I could trash it or I could just add more. But remember, and this is good to remember, is that it adds it from the point that you are in. Now the order, I think, is based on where you selected them, but I think it may also be uh, based on time okay all right so now I'm kind of done I'm kind of good I'm like okay this actually looks pretty good right watch it through one time looks like we're hung up a little bit looks like here let's see what happened I'm actually watching it on my phone and looks like you might be lagging a little bit here so let me just get out real quick and redo this reconnect Right. Oh yeah, see what happened? <laughs> it timed out. So that's a, that's a thing, right, is that you have to reconnect. So the last part of this, and I'm going to go ahead while it's doing that. Oh, I have to reconnect. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save. Or actually, yeah, see I don't want to get out because if at, at this point I think, let's just try this. So hold on, let me reconnect here. Okay, that was fun. Uh, it's always fun when you try something new and things don't always work out. So what I ended up having to do was recreate that, 
which was kind of fun because I learned a lot in just doing it and you'll end up doing this a couple times right so the so I think hopefully you at least have the gist of what I'm trying to give you okay which is to you know go in add your photos make you know pay attention to how you're adding your photos right so I'm just showing you again here so the the leftmost uh, or the rightmost icon is adding you know starting with a couple to adding some more then choosing your music I definitely recommend using their built-in theme music because otherwise you might get a copyright issue right okay oh yeah so you can include this is nice you can include the audio from the videos that you're adding as well which I want to do so there's parts there um, I got to choose my music uh, which is awesome I just showed you that and then I got to choose my theme right so now once you do all this and this is not ultimately the movie I wanted to create but it's the movie I'm showing you with right now right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to the share right so let's make sure that shows up so now I'm gonna go to YouTube right so now what I'm doing and this is gonna take a few minutes here is this is gonna actually create now the movie right so um, it's going to download those into its app it's going to end up doing the part so that I can have the video so while it's doing the video I'm going to switch back just so I can uh, show you now right so let's go back here right so I've shown you I've walked you through how to use Google Photo Assistant to create the movie right so again the movie function is built in to the Google uh, Assistant part of this and so now what's happening is it's going to take a little bit and but it's going to end up being in my YouTube account matter of fact let me just for a second go back and look at my photos because I have noticed prior to this let's see if it actually showed sometimes ah actually here's what happened so remember before when I told you I thought that the I had lost it they actually were here so this is actually the movie oh so actually this is the one getting ready so this is the one it's rendering right now and this is one I was working on oh I guess that one is too um, oh, and I want to include that so here's the other thing I did so while it's doing its thing and we'll see if it finishes and and if not I'll pause and let it finish is I also in my movie I'm going to include um, images like there was uh, the director of women tech makers the event I was at tweeted an image of me on stage which was awesome right so by the way uh, I'm going to switch now back because now if you if I switch back look what's happened let me maximize the screen so now uh, on oh, oh there we go so now I'm ready so I'm going to do sample uh -oh. So I'm going to do um, class example because this will be one I end up getting rid of but I just want to show you right description I could put that the pu it's going to be public and you want oh how about I do example correct right right so um, definitely add a nice little descriptor there it's going to be public so now I'm sending it to YouTube right so now it actually rendered the movie and now it's um, you'll see this it's actually prep, prepping it right so we can actually let that kind of do its thing for a second we're actually getting closer now into the point uh, oh it actually changed oh, well I could have changed orientations why didn't I think of that that would have been a cool thing to do anyway so now right so now you've taken notes you have have at least enough of the Google Assistant uh, create create your movie if you're using something else obviously that's what you're doing right um, and so mine is actually now being pu pushed out to uh, Google uh, to images uh, sorry to YouTube <laughs> I'll get this right in a second um, actually it's 80% there oh and it's ready to be watched that's pretty cool so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to YouTube um, for me I'm gonna go to my channel because I suspect it's on my channel sometimes based on the interface I have to do this right uh, you will also get a link on the photo itself right so here it is oh this is cool right so here is the example of what I created now a couple things you're not hearing the audio but it's kind of cool it's not a minute yet so it doesn't meet my requirements but you know so you can also let's see where the video yeah, here's the video oh see now that one didn't turn out so I'd have to redo that one 
Oh, good. So there is now my credit. Is it was it the wrong one? But that's okay. But you get the point, right? So let me just show you this last step. So no matter what you use, the last step is you're going to share it. So on your YouTube video page that you've created, you do hit the embed. So this should actually kind of be familiar, right? So I'm going to copy that, right? Uh, get out of here. So again, what I did is I hit share, and then in share I hit embed. Uh, da, 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 and then I uh, let's just scroll down. So I'm going to copy that. And now, uh, when you end up here, so now you're on the hands-on, right? You'll do your post. And um, again, I'm going to play with mine because I, I have some more work to do to it. You switch to the HTML, and then you switch back, and then that shows your movie. Okay. So what you want to do here is, and I'll write up with this in here: 150 words for the experience, whatever you ended up using here. Right. Make sure you have my requirements in place. Tell us maybe what you used. If you use something else, why? You know, if you used uh, the Google Assistant, um, the machine learning for Google, how was your experience with that? You know, anything about this, and then do your normal replies. Okay. So I hope you've picked up something along the way of doing this work. Thanks for hanging there with me. I know it was a little clunky at times, but I really did give this quite a bit of thought and try to figure out how to give you. Uh, a good example and some good experience of creating these kind of things because often in our lives we like to create things that actually tell a story of something we've experienced. Okay, so uh, that's it for your classwork uh, for this week. Uh, go ahead and for this assignment then all you'll need to do is actually give me your classwork docs or your, your link to your classwork. Uh, that's all you'll need to give me for this and then it will be for the hands-on that you will actually do the movie part. Alright, have a good week and I will talk to you soon.